Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at diffusion and active transport, but we'll start off by looking at diffusion first. So one example that we can use to demonstrate diffusion is if we have a container of water and we have a little crystal in there, that's potassium permanganate, but you don't need to worry too much about that. It's a colored crystal that will spread into the water if we leave it at the bottom there, it will start to dissolve. And after a period of time, the color of the crystal will spread throughout the water until it is spread evenly. This is an example of diffusion. Diffusion. Now, what exactly is diffusion? Well, we can define it in the following way. Diffusion is the movement, and sometimes you can use the word spreading instead of movement. But it's the movement of particles from a high concentration to a low concentration. So where they are in high concentration to where they are in low concentration. It's also important to note that diffusion happens or can happen in a gas or in a solution. The example below is diffusion happening in a solution. And another way we can phrase this is the idea of particles moving down, down a concentration gradient, down a concentration gradient. So from a high concentration to a low, we have a concentration gradient. Now, we can look at this in an example in living things. So if we take a look at this outline of a body, we can take out a little diagram there of some capillaries that are supplying cells. And you can imagine that the blood going to the cells, which are in this yellow color in the middle, the blood going to those cells comes from the lungs via the heart. And because blood comes from the lungs via the heart, it's going to have a high oxygen concentration. It's also going to have a low carbon dioxide concentration as well. Now, in terms of the cells, well, they carry out something called respiration. So there's our uh, oxygen molecules there in the red blood cells. The cells carry out a process called respiration. So they're going to have a low oxygen concentration inside them. And therefore, if we've got high concentration of oxygen in the blood and low in the cells, oxygen is going to diffuse into the cells across the membranes. So we get diffusion of oxygen into the cells. The cells also produce carbon dioxide from respiration, so they're going to have a high concentration of carbon dioxide compared to the concentration in the blood. So there we've got our concentration gradient, and therefore carbon dioxide will diffuse outwards into the blood plasma, not into red blood cells, into the plasma. So two examples of diffusion in living things. Remember, these two are as a result of respiration. Oxygen is used up and carbon dioxide is produced in respiration. Okay, so let's take a look at the next form of transport, which is called active transport, which is slightly different to, to diffusion. Here, in active transport, we have the movement of particles from a low concentration to a high concentration. That's in the opposite direction to diffusion. So we have a low concentration, and we could say that the particles move against a concentration gradient. Against a concentration gradient. Now, the important thing to remember here is that if we're moving particles against a concentration gradient, we need to use energy, and that energy comes from respiration. So it's using energy from respiration. That's a very important part of the definition of active transport, the fact that we use energy. Okay, and one example that we can use is if we pluck out some cells from this plant root. Here, I'm sure you've seen some of these before. These are root hair cells. We've got two there in the blue and gray color. So these are root hair cells. And they have the job, let's just label that there. They have the job of absorbing water, but they also absorb mineral ions from the soil. They also absorb mineral ions from the soil. And the issue with the mineral ions usually is that the Mineral ions are in low concentration in the soil and in a higher concentration in the root hair cells. So they're in a higher concentration in the root hair cells. So we can't have diffusion because we would be going against the concentration gradient. So here's our low concentration of mineral ions compared to a higher concentration of mineral ions in the root hair cells. So what we need to do is to use active transport and energy from respiration in order to transport those mineral ions into the root hair cells. Okay, so that's what active transport is, and there's a common example of active transport. There's one other example that is quite common, 
and that's when we have the absorption of nutrients from digested food in the small intestine. So absorbing nutrient into the small intestine, for example, amino acids or glucose, this involves actively transporting those nutrients in. Okay, so let's have a quick comparison of the two. Diffusion versus active transport. With diffusion, we've got the particles that move from a high to a low concentration, whereas, whereas in active transport, we have the particles moving from a low concentration to a high concentration, or in other words, against a concentration gradient. The word whereas helps us to compare the two. It's a good comparison word. And if you're asked about this, you should always uh, talk about the two processes. With diffusion, there's no energy needed. We sometimes describe it as a passive process. So there's no energy input required. Whereas for active transport, whereas for active transport, we need energy from respiration in order for that to happen. Okay, so these are the key differences between diffusion and active transport. If you're ever, if you're ever asked about these, remember to compare the two by using the word whereas and not just, to talk, not just to talk about one of them. Okay, so diffusion and active transport, the definitions and examples for the uses of each one of those. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.